Hi, I'm Jeff. This is Tropical Plants at 53 degrees north. So, begonia. Even the word sounds boring to me, but believe me, they are anything but boring. And I'm one of these people who has been a convert over the past 12 months. Prior to that, I thought of begonias as the typical British bedding plant and the tuberous begonias, the great big massive blousy blooms. That Yeah, they're very nice, they're colourful, but they're not really my cup of tea. However, I have since become an advocate of begonias and I thought what I would do is I would show you my collection. I've got quite a number, more than I thought I had, and talk about some of their care requirements and show you some of their progress, the before and the after from 12 months ago when they were little tiny plug plants. Just wait till you see them now. Let's jump in. And we are in. Okay, so I am attempting to avoid looking at any begonias as of yet because I want to build things up a little bit and show you how beautiful they really can be. And I don't want to reveal it all at once. You'll have seen them over the last year as things have progressed, but they really have changed. And if you think that it's just under 12 months ago since I bought most of my begonias as tiny little plug plants that only cost two or three pounds each and you see them now, the state that they're in now, um, then you will really, I'm quite sure, begin to see why they make such fabulous house plants. So what we're going to do is we'll talk about some of the successes and failures that I've had with begonias over the last 12 years. And just before we do, I thought you might like to take a little look at this sundew. So this is, and I don't know whether it'll actually focus on it here, this is a sundew that I've had for again about a year. This one is particularly difficult to focus on because of where I've got it, but it's Drusera binata variety multifida but i was having a few problems with wondering how to display this and somebody suggested hanging it and it does actually work really well again i've said this before with sun juice you just cannot see how good they look in real life how they really glisten it's like a glowing ball of dew it really is a beautiful plant it's kind of alien looking to me but as i say the uh, the camera won't really focus on it You've got these lovely red hairs with like glowing globules of dew on each single hair, every single hair. And uh, a lot of them have flies on them as well, so it's doing its job. But yeah, if anybody has this kind of thing, um, hanging it like this is a really great way of displaying it. I have found though, obviously because it's higher up in the greenhouse um, and towards the roof, when the sun comes out on the rare occasion that it comes out, because it's absolutely pouring it down today and it's forecast to be pouring it down for several more days yet, uh, the water that I put in here doesn't really last that long. So that's something to think about. Anyway, we're getting back to begonias. So what I was going to do is we're going to talk about houseplant begonia care along the way. And we're also going to look at some of my successes and failures. So Begoniaceae as a family is a really big family. I talked about the word begonia being really boring and dull. It does seem like it is to me, in fact, quite a dull name. And that's because I've been used to only two types of begonias. Everybody in the UK thinks they know what begonias are. Well, that's almost like saying someone who's grown a phalaenopsis knows what an orchid is. Orchids are such a wide family of plants that it's impossible, I think, to know them all. Practically every week I come across orchids, the names of orchids that I've never even heard of. So that gives you an idea of how big they are. Begonias have over 1,800 species and they also have thousands of more hybrids. So they are kind of loosely grouped because they are so wide and varied. And in fact, you could say, when you look at the ones that I've got, you could say that it's really difficult to actually say that they are related in any way whatsoever. The characteristics are so different as to be almost laughable to say that they're in the same family, but indeed they are. So we're going to go through some of mine. I'll discuss some of the groupings as well uh, when we look at the various plants that I've got. So what I've done is I've dug out my video from a year ago and I'm going to intersperse that with what they look like now. And then you can see exactly where they've come from and what they've ended up as 12 months later. Okay, so we're gonna have a look at two from the loose grouping of Rex. So the Begonia Rex group 
Now, first of all, before I go into what that is, these groupings aren't anything scientific. So this is the American Or Orchid Society. And what they've done is they've loosely grouped them. And some of them, as they have actually readily admitted, don't really fit into any of their groups. But for ease of discussion, I'm going to use the American Orchid Society groupings. I think many people, for example, will go along with the Rex group because that's a nice straightforward one. If the plant is a hybrid that's come from Begonia Rex, which was, I believe, a species that was found in India several years ago. I don't know how many years ago, but a species that was found in India and all the other Rex varieties that's come from that is a hybrid from that original plant. So obviously between them, they've crossed them with other plants, other species of plants, hybrids, cross with hybrids and so on and you've ended up with this loose group of begonia rex plants so that's one of the groupings so what i'm going to do is i'll show you my two plants i'm going to show you now from the rex group what they were like 12 months ago so the two plants are begonia silver lace and begonia curly fire flush so we'll start off with the silver lace so this is what it looks like now so first of all, this one is kept in the warm side of my greenhouse and it took quite a while to get going. So first of all, let's just have a look at some of its characteristics. So we've got these very hairy stems. We've got this beautiful kind of, is that burgundy? Like a burgundy color underneath. The new leaves are very deep red. And then on the top, we've got, well, what can only be described as silver lace. There's kind of a hint of pink on there as well, on the younger ones, the younger leaves, and the older leaves, um, that pink tends to disappear. But it's grown relatively big. It's still in the pot that I potted it up into originally 12 months ago. Um, and you can see it's beginning to look like a rather nice plant. So how come it was set back? Well, what happened was, it was kept in the cooler side of the greenhouse and this is where you've got to be careful with the care requirements because the general recommendations for a begonia is that they can take quite low temperatures but only for short periods of time but i found that it changes depending on what the plant is so this particular one it was at 12 degrees as you know in the cool side of the greenhouse but it's at that temperature day and night uh, week after week, month after month. It's actually probably about four months in total when it doesn't change from that temperature. That's as warm as it goes, even when the sun comes out. It's on the rare occasion that the sun comes out and this plant didn't like it. It started to lose all its leaves. And it was only when I then thought, right, better get it into the warm side, that it began to come back. I really don't have a problem with it now. It's growing very quickly and it's looking like a really nice, attractive plant. So I'm really happy with the way that's gone and I'm happy that it's actually recovered. So talking about some of the care requirements. So as we've already alluded to, the different plants, depending on what loose group they belong to, have slightly different care requirements. But what we can say is they will all take roughly room temperatures this is what makes them such good house plants they don't like to be in direct sunshine none of them and it's worth remembering here that we're not talking about the two groups that are used as uk bedding plants so they are the tuberous begonias and the semperflorans begonias they're the bedding plant varieties so we're not talking about those they may well take sun but the Begonia Rex varieties will not take sun and neither will any of the ones that I'm going to show you today. And that's what makes them so good. We're not talking about deep shade, of course. We're still talking about as bright light as you can get it. But I've found that they're really not that fussy. Even the darker areas of my greenhouse, they're really happy in. So that's the silver lace. So you've probably seen this one before. This one is the one that makes you want to eat it, I think. This is Begonia Curly Fire Flush. Absolutely stunning plant. And something that even though Begonia Rex tend to want to be grown for the leaves, uh, they can actually produce quite beautiful flowers. So what we've got here, we've got these really hairy red stems. Um, but we've got these very fragrant and gorgeous looking to me anyway, blooms on it with the male and female centers to them. So I think that's something that's quite typical of begonias. They do tend to, tend to produce male and female flowers. But that's something that was quite a shock. I wasn't expecting it. Um, the silver lace hasn't yet bloomed, but I shall certainly be very interested to see what happens when it does. That probably is due a repot soon and that'll help it 
move along so that it will hopefully bloom for me. So all Rex varieties are rhizomatous. They grow roughly 30, 40 centimetres tall. And as I've already said, the pretty okay with the lower temperatures but not for a long time however having said that this one the curly fire flush was great at 12 degrees didn't phase it at all no problem whatsoever with that one so this is where you, it's difficult to say uh, this particular variety that belongs to the Rex Begonia group has such a temperature and this one has such a temperature because it's different. That one couldn't cope with that temperature for a long time. It coped with it for a couple of months but it couldn't cope with it for any longer. This one coped with it perfectly well for several months, no problem whatsoever and it's even bloomed for me. So they're the two Rex varieties that I have at the moment. Okay, so we're going to have a look at Silver Jewel. So first of all, this is what it looked like 12 months ago, and this is what it looks like now. So this again isn't one that's grown massively huge. Um, they don't really grow very big anyway. It's in a small pot. It's probably okay for the, in that little pot for a while yet. Uh, because the small rhizomatous group don't tend to grow more than 20 or 30 centimeters anyway. So they stay quite compact, which again keeps them pretty okay for a house plant or a greenhouse so I don't think this one is my favorite one it was okay at 12 degrees Celsius I didn't have to move it but it's not looking to my eye anyway that great at the moment I think it needs a water as well I think it's quite dry in there but they do like to be dry they don't want to be absolutely soaking wet all the time they like to be left dry for several days so that's silver jewel Again, not a favourite. This one is sea urchin, but I expect this one will go better as it goes bigger. The photographs I've seen of it when it looks quite big uh, really look more attractive than what I've got here. Um, however, this one has bloomed, so I'll show you what it looked like 12 months ago. And this is what it looks like now, but I'll also put some footage of the blooms or some photos of the blooms. and You can make your own mind up what it looks like because the blooms were actually really rather attractive and everyone always thinks of begonias as being just for the foliage well what do you think of those blooms i think they're absolutely spectacular and it was a real surprise to me because i don't normally like begonia blooms but of course i'm only thinking of the semperflorums and the tuberous begonias so that's sea urchin again still on the small rhizomatous varieties this one is begonia bowerai or tiger paw or the eyelash begonia so this is one of those that has so many different types of leaf it almost looks like several plants stuck together so you can see like loads of variation in the markings on them and the colors and the shades this one also bloomed and again it was also a really nice surprise um, i really like this thing i think the closer you look at it the more detail that you see and the more kind of delicate and intricate little parts of it that are attractive um, just spring up in front of you um, some of these markings especially the the green ones are almost fluorescent really nice plant that really happy with that one very very easy to look after been absolutely fine at 12 degrees celsius all over winter and then it's coping what with whatever happens in the greenhouse on this side if you look underneath as well you can you can see there's bits falling off it actually <laughs> you can see like those the green on top but they're like white underneath they're almost like little windows if you hold it to the light you can see through them lovely little thing so this this is one of the small rhizomatous ones that's begonia bowerai so this one is an exception so this isn't one that i actually bought 12 months ago this one is begonia mazai or mazai f nigricans it's well known for being like one of the darkest leaf begonias still small rhizomatous begonia that's the group that it's in and this one I've had several months. It was actually a cutting from a, a fellow YouTuber. Uh, I purchased, purchased it off him. And you can see what we've got on here. We've got these stems with, I don't know what these are. They almost look like sepals, but they can't be. I'm not really sure what the structure is. It's almost like a sheath um, that the stem has come out of. You can see what a gorgeous kind of copper color the underside of the leaves are. And you can also see that the whole thing is kind of fanning out like a peacock as if it's pointing towards something in particular it's actually pointing away from the, the way the sun goes the sun 
is on the other side, on the back of this. So whether it's pointing towards the grow light, that's possible. You can also see, and again, I think the camera spoils this a little bit, um, but the leaves are really different shades. That dark one that you can see in the centre there, that's how most of the leaves were initially. But now we've got all sorts of colours and shades on it. Um, I understand that the brightness of the light can make a difference, but I can't remember whether it was the brighter the light, the more green the leaves go, or the other way around. I mean, I would have expected it to be bright light that gave it more green, because obviously it then would be feed it feeding itself it will be producing food through photosynthesis uh, but some of them well, look at these down here so you've got like a really green one there in the center again the colors might be slightly different from what you're seeing but look at that one at the bottom there it almost looks like somebody's dripped blood on it and i'll show you that's not the case um, there's another one down there that's got these red markings on it as well so it's a really nice thing it will not grow much bigger than this i believe 20 to 30 centimeters again was the information on this one so again a really nice plant to have in the house uh, loads and loads of interest in it and again i can't wait to see the blooms because i really have been surprised with everyone that's bloomed so far has given me something that i've not expected so that's another small rhizomatous begonia and that's that's the four plants that i have in that particular group so believe me we are getting to the more interesting ones not that these aren't interesting but we've got some real whoppers to show you so don't go away